how do you do so many things and do so many, so many of these different ideas and brands and businesses and how do you do all this stuff? Well, cat's out of the bag. You know how I do it? It's 15 minute hustles. everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are going to talk briefly about getting more done in your business. Does everyone want to get more done? I don't know about you, but my to-do list is a mile long most of the time. But I've also learned to manage and control and move around that list of things in order to get more done in my business. And it's not that big of a secret, but if it's a strategy that you don't know about or haven't implemented yet, then you're definitely going to want to tune in. And maybe some of you guys just need a refresher on this because it's been a minute and you want to make sure that you're just been reminded that this is a really great way to get more done in your business. So first of all, I want to remind you guys that we just finished an awesome, amazing work shop. I met the most amazing people. We had a great time. It was really awesome. And we have launched the rest of our workshop locations for the most of the remaining of this year. There might be a couple more added, but we have a virtual option. We have an option that's going to be in LA. We have an option that's going to be in Minneapolis. So I want you guys to take a look at mommyincome.com slash workshop so that you can pick a location where you and I can meet together. We can do bundles. We can walk through trade shows and we can have a really awesome year. So I absolutely love workshops. I love meeting people in person. I feel like so many great things happen within workshops and new friendships are formed and people that come to workshops usually find the most success when it comes to wholesale bundling because they feel supported. They feel like they have these aha breakthrough moments where the course was great, but they got the questions asked. They got to build a bundle together with other people and kind of um, fail and try again and, and, and work through things and realize how normal that process really is when you do it yourself. And it gives them the number one thing they need to continue, which is confidence. Confidence comes with practice. Confidence comes when you continually do something and change and tweak it to make it your own and you're just knocking it out of the park. So make sure you check out mommyincomes.com slash workshop um, for all the new 2022 workshop dates that we have coming up. So when it comes to business, there are more tasks than there are hours. Am I right? I mean, how many of us have these lists that are so long? We're like, we're never going to get this done. And then every time you cross something off the list, there's something else on the list and it just keeps going and going. Well, I can't change that for you because that's entrepreneurship. You know, you're, you're the one in charge, you're CEO and janitor. You're going to have to do all the hard things and the easy things and all the things until you can hire help, which I hope is sooner than later. But some of these things really get in the way of us getting more done in our business. And I would love to have more free time. Would, wouldn't you? I mean, hobbies and family and friends and just having creative fun and doing other things or even starting a second business or a third business. I am like a serial entrepreneur. I'm always starting different businesses or have these different new business ideas that I want to pursue or even new bundle ideas and brands. And the list goes on and on and on. And so if you're a visionary or a um, like me or have like a multiple idea, like idea factory is what I call myself. I have like a million ideas, um, but I also have strong follow through. So it, it's really hard because I could end up with 12 businesses if I wanted. But the reality is that helps me be creative. But how do I get all this stuff done? I have had people ask me this for years and years. Like, how do you do so many things and do so many, so many of these different ideas and brands and businesses? And how do you do all this stuff? Well, cats out of the bag. You know how I do it? It's 15 minute hustles. To be honest, that's really how I get most things done. But the number one way that I use a 15 minute hustle is mostly for procrastination because <laughs> I am the queen of procrastinating things that are hard, that are difficult, that I don't know about, that are new to me, that are uncomfortable, pretty much most things for most of us. And so I, I'm going to give you a few tips today on how to do that. But for some of you, it might be new here and welcome. I'm so glad you're listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Welcome. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Uh, what is the 15 minute hustle? So we will get to that in, uh, shortly. But 15 minute hustles are really how 
I am able to, to do all that. But some of the things that you want to do and need to do first in order to get more done in your Amazon business is to first start with a little bit of organization because the 15 minute hustle strategy does not work until you do some of the things up front first when it's part of it is the organization. I want to look at a few reasons why you might be feeling constantly behind and overwhelmed in your business and help you with a couple of those solutions. One of those things is going to be organization and planning. And you guys, I am not a super, like some people are super planners and they got those like planners that have all the different dots and the, the different line, line items for every single thing they have. And they follow their planner, like, like to the T and it's just crazy. And I admire that and I respect that. And I think that that's really awesome if that works for you. But I got to tell you, I'm going to show you some of these. Some of our podcast listeners cannot see this, but all these other people can. Like, this is literally how I function. <laughs> or don't. For some of you guys, like, what is going on? I have 150 different sticky notes. I have charts. I have everything else. I've got notebooks. I've got digital and everything else. I like paper and pen, but I also know how important it is to stay organized. And although this looks like a little mess to some of you, um, I do have a method and a, a process and a strategy, and I do use these things in order to organize myself. So whatever it looks like for you, you got to know right now what's not working. Are you, if you, if you think you're going to, if you buy a planner every single year and you never use it, don't buy a planner. Planners don't work for you. Do you work by notifications on your phone? Is that the best way to reach you? Then I, I am like, I live and die by my calendar. If it's not on my calendar, then it's not, it doesn't exist. So if you want time on my, if you want to talk to me, if you want to have a conversation, you want this, if it's not giving me a notification somewhere, it's not going to happen. I wish sticky notes could give like digital notifications. <laughs> I'm working on that. Maybe there's an app for that, but I'm sure there is. But the, the reality is you have to figure out what works best for you that you are actually going to follow through on. Yes, we can create new habits. That's absolutely true. But you also have to be 100% committed to creating new habits and giving it, you know, six weeks of practice every single day to make a new habit. But I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to make a new habit when it comes to organization. I'm pretty much stuck in my ways at 40 plus years old and my sticky notes are just going to be my sticky notes. I love sticky notes. My kids even know if they want, my, if mom needs to do something for them, um, they put a sticky note on my computer screen because that's the place I'm going to see it and that's the place I'm going to take action on it. If they try to tell me in passing, hey, I need something for the bake sale or you need to sign this form or I need you to take me to the shop tomorrow to drop off my car. I will forget if it's either not on my calendar or not on a sticky note. So um, mail me a sticky note if you want to get in touch. Um, no, all, all that aside, you need to know and work. No, do you know exactly what you're going to sit down and work on today? Um, do you know what you need to do first, second, third? Do you know all of your money making tasks? Um, who do you know who is doing what, when in your business and how often they're doing it and how often it needs to be done? This is really, really important. Part of the problem is your lack of organization. And even if you're a su if you're a super organized person and you're still feeling behind and overwhelmed, then maybe it's one of these other different problems that we might have that we can also fight with that. But if the number one thing is really like you feel very unorganized and you don't have a plan and you don't have a rhyme or a reason, part of that is is starting there. Like when you sit down to do your work, what exactly are you going to be doing? on what days, what kind of tasks do you have? What do you need to do first, second, and third? What are your money-making tasks? Who's doing what, when, and how often? These are just questions you need to ask yourself that can have simple answers. So that might be part of the problem is kind of getting organized and, and, and figuring out what, what needs to be done. That's the second thing. Do you even know what needs to be done when and by whom and how often? You need a complete task list for your business. Now, this is like, okay, when you go to work at a job a, and you get a job, there's usually standard operating procedures. Um, they're called SOPs or there, there's an employee handbook or there's some sort of training. There's do's and don'ts. There's, and if you, if you got a job, there, there was expectations laid out for you. This is a job description. This is what you, we expect you to do. These are the deliverables. These are the action steps. This is what, how you are accountable for your time. Even like, do you punch a time card or do you have to check in with a mobile scan badge? Or there's lots of different things within your business. The thing about being an entrepreneur is that you don't have a boss telling you what your SOPs are or what your deliverables are. You have to come up with that on your own. 
or do you? <laughs> Not in this business. You don't have to come up with it on your own. If you are a member of the Amazon Files Hub, then you have a complete task list as part of the Hub training. So go into your student portal in the Hub and look for the FBA um, task list training. And it's a really brief video and it's a list, a file, a template of the things that you should be doing on a regular basis um, by day, week, month, quarter, year within your business. So you don't even have to create that list. It's been created for you. Um, so if you're a Hub student, make sure that you go into the Hub and you look for this daily task list or your master task list for your FBA business. So if you don't have one of these and you're not in the hub, then I will give you a brief explanation of how to create this. You organize this list by daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and as needed uh, tasks. And once you have that task, um, then you add it to your to tasks to your calendar. Knowing what you're doing the next day or knowing what you're going to do next is greatly going to reduce the time it takes to figure out what you need to do and get started. That's a lot of where time is wasted and lost when it comes to an entrepreneur is that we're responsible for so many things that we sometimes sit down at our desk and know that we have a boatload of stuff to do, but we don't really know what to do because there's so many things. We don't know where to start. We don't know what's the most important, what's the least important, and we don't give much thought to thinking of those things. We just feel like, oh, we got to sit down and get this done. Get what done? In what order and how? And so creating some space for you yourself to create these master tasks list, um, then it would be really helpful for you. So you add that to the, the calendar. Organize your list by daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and as needed. Now, when you do that, what are the day? I'll, I'll give you a couple of outlines, but if you're in the hub, you can just download this. I'm not going to, I don't have the whole list in front of me and there's lots of different things. You know, you have to source products. You have to research products. You have to build bundles. You have um, customer service things you have to handle. So any notifications at all from Amazon, especially from seller performance, if there's any feedback items, those are things that need to be checked daily. Things that can actually lose you money and hurt your account, you want to check in with daily. Do you have any messages from Amazon? Do you have any listing errors that you need to fix? Do you have any customer service messages you need to answer? Those are daily tasks. Um, you know, then things like weekly tasks would be like feedback removal. Somebody leaves a negative feedback and you want to try to send them a new product or um, checking on your inventory and your inbound shipping. And then you've got product research and sourcing. And how often are you going to do that and when and where and how? Write these things down. Kind of create your own employee handbook for yourself because because this will reduce decision making. And as CEOs, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call yourself, um, you're all of those things, by the way. If you own your own business, you are a business owner. You are a CEO. You are um, an entrepreneur. And so you can own any or all of those titles. This isn't just some little small side gig you've got going on. This is a big deal. You started a business. Most people don't do that. And most people start businesses um, usually fail within the first five years because they don't do their due diligence, but not you. You are here listening to training that's going to help you keep moving and get your dreams and make them reality. But dreams don't work unless you do, right? So let's do it. Create that list for yourself and start with money making tasks. What is actually going to put dollar bills in your pocket? Because product research, although it is absolutely necessary in this business, does not put money in your pocket. The only way to put money in your pocket is to do the research, buy the products, bundle them up, send them to Amazon. Those are money making tasks. Check, writing a listing on Amazon is a money making task. You know why? Because you can't sell that product without it taking your, doing your images, um, doing your product research, researching for a prep center is research. Yes, it's great, but that doesn't put money in your pocket until you actually send product in and sell it. So make sure you're focusing on the things that you need to be focusing on. So create your master task list. So now you know what needs to be done and how often. And then by whom you can outsource those things. You can do them for yourself. You can make yourself a list or a schedule. Look, I'll be frank. I won't be frank. I'll be Kristen. 
I know these are my mom jokes or people say dad jokes. Um, you know, it's like you turn 40 and then you tell the cheesiest jokes to people and their kids just roll their eyes and think you're really embarrassing. And I like to do that to my kids on purpose because I find entertainment in it. So if I tell the mom jokes or the dad jokes or the cheesy jokes, just roll your eyes with me. It's really going to be okay. You don't even have to laugh or you can laugh at me and not with me because I'm totally cool with that as well. I'm always laughing at myself. So you're welcome for all of the mom jokes that I tell. But in order to get this stuff going and creating these task lists for yourself, you kind of need to know who, what, when, where, why, and how, and you can hire someone to do those things later on, but you really need to create this list. And once you have the list, then, you know, you can, you can create these things for yourself. And I, what I was going to really say was I don't love being on a schedule. Honestly, I don't. I prefer to have more flexibility and more freedom to do things when kind of the mood hits, but then also we can't live like that, right? Because if I only did the right things when I felt like doing them, I probably wouldn't do them most of the time. I mean, things are hard. Things are fearful. Things are difficult. Decisions are hard to make. And CEOs and business owners and entrepreneurs face decision fatigue all the time, every day probably. We're constantly making small and big decisions and it's exhausting. So the less amount of decision making you can make in your life that can just be a no brainer or something that you don't actually have to think about in the moment, that makes your life so much easier. And coming from a flexible, flexibility, non-scheduling, non-regimented, um, I like to buck the system when it comes to routine, although it's like a love-hate. Like I love routine, but then I hate it because it feels like I feel like so trapped by it and like I have to. Is anybody with me here? Anybody? I know some of you guys and I know some of you are major like live and die by the planner and if it says Monday at 3 p.m. you're doing this then come hell and high water Monday at 3 p.m. you're doing that to where I like a little bit more flexibility like this are these are the things that need to be done this week but it doesn't necessarily have to be Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday. It could be any time this week as long as it's done by then. I like deadlines more than I like calendar appointment type things. So if you're more like me and you're like, oh, I don't want to say on Monday I do this and on Tuesday I do this and on Wednesday, then create more flexibility in your task list. But things that still need to be done once a week still need to be done once a week, whether you do it on Monday or Friday or Wednesday or at 3 a.m. or 3 p.m., that's up to you. Create some flexibility if you know you're not going to stick to a regimen because I tried that too, guys, and guess what? It didn't work. I was like, okay, Monday at 10, I'm going to do this. And Tuesday at 2 p.m., I'm going to do this. And this is this. And, and, and it just like the week went by and I just didn't do any of that because in the moment I might have been in a creative space and was like, well, I'm not going to stop right now and, you know, chase down FBA feedback because it says that at 2 p.m. on Saturday or Tuesday or Wednesday, it says that I'm in the zone and I'm not going to break my zone of, you know, sometimes you get in a creative zone where you're just like, everything is clicking together and you're finding really good products and you're, you've got these amazing great ideas and all that kind of stuff. And other times there's dark clouds and you, you don't have creative space and you're struggling to, to keep your shit together most of the day. You know, that's okay. We have to have our space for that. But in, in the end, you're going to need to be disciplined enough to get the stuff done that you need to get done and not put it off. We're going to talk about putting it off and procrastination in a moment. So when you're creating your list, this list is just available so that you, when you sit down and you're not sure exactly what you can do, you can grab your master list and you can say, hey, now I know I can do some of these things. And some of them take five minutes. Some of them take 30 minutes. Some of them take a whole day. But you know that you can check some of those things off of that list every single week if you have the list. So it's time to really make the master list for your business. And I'm going to give you a resource that's going to help you with this at the end of the show. So hang in there because I know I'm never going to leave you hanging. Okay. Another thing that you can do is block groups of tasks together. This is like 
time blocking is like the official thing for it, but I don't like to call it that. It's just like research can be done in a large chunk of time. But if you're organized enough, you can do it in smaller, st smaller chunks and smaller steps. That's a reason why our wholesale bundle system framework is steps, because you can do a couple of different steps and then you can stop and pick up right where you left off when you need to come back to it. You can keep your tabs open. You can save them. You can save them in a Google doc. You can um, come back and say, okay, I ended on step seven. That's all you have to do when you walk away from something is say, oh, I ended on step seven so that when you come back, you know you're going to step eight. So creating these things for yourself ahead of time and you guys creating this organization plan doesn't take all day on a Saturday or Sunday. It literally can take 15 minutes, but you have to do it in order to make it work. Um, it's built, this wholesale bundle system is built in such a way that you can do it in smaller chunks. There's no video that's more, longer than 15 minutes in the wholesale bundle system. So you're able to watch 15 minutes at a time. You're able to take your notes. You're able to do all these different things. Smaller, shorter tasks should be grouped together. It should be done very similarly. So if like inventory reconciliation, feedback removal requests, a back end admin type tasks in your business, some of them take a few minutes, some of them take a few minutes longer, but those can all be grouped together to where creative type things like research and um, putting bundles together and exploring new catalogs and new product ideas, those are more creative tasks. And so you don't necessarily want to mix your creative tasks with your, like your admin tasks, things that, you know, and, and eat and also group them by how you like to do tasks. You know, like we all have all these wonderful, crazy things to do. And if you're more of a data driven line item type person, do those things first. You know why? Because it gives you this quick win and you feel like, okay, I've got that done. I feel successful. I feel accomplished. Now you can move on to more creative space because creative space needs wiggle room. You need flexibility. You need open-mindedness. You need to be in a really good headspace in order to create new things. So if you go into something with a negative headspace or, you know, some bad things have just happened, or maybe you just had some moments of major stress, and then you try to go do a creative process, your creative process is going to turn out like the mood that you just walked in on. So maybe taking some time to make sure that you're in the right creative space. And sometimes we can't wait for inspiration. We can't wait for the time to be right where we're feeling creative. Sometimes we just got to do it. Because if I always waited until I was inspired, I may be waiting for weeks or months. I mean, I'm not always inspired, but when I am, boy, look out. However, sometimes we need to force ourselves into a place of creativity, um, but we can set ourselves up for success in that and that we can either take a 15 minute walk or take some time to kind of reorient ourselves from this task to that task, which is great. Having breaks throughout the day, taking a lunch break. Moms dads, parents, people with multiple children or multiple dogs or multiple people that rely on you. A lot of us skip meals. We skip time for ourselves. We skip breaks because we think we just have to go, go, go and do, do, do and check off lists and like all these things. But guess what? You need breaks. You need meals. Not just like eating the crust of the peanut butter and jelly that your kids left on the plate because, you know, you just don't want to make yourself a sandwich. But let's be real. We need fuel for our brains, for our bodies. We need more than just <laughs> our cup of coffee, right? I mean, I literally live on coffee all day. Um, I literally sip the same cup, it seems, most of the day. But I got to have my go-go juice is what I call it. The reality is we need to take time to take those breaks because our brain needs it. We cannot be working 24-7 all the time and expect to produce our best work. You know, we don't run our car on dirty, nasty oil. We get oil changes when our car needs them. Every, you know, I guess now it's three to 6,000 miles, depending on how you drive. But every week or month or day, depending on how much you drive, your car needs new gas, fuel, in order to keep it running optimally. You need that too. Rest, breaks, exercise, stretching, walking. I know these are all sexy words, right? No, but we need that. And if we're performing less than optimal in our business and we find ourselves with lack of creativity and overwhelm and stress, how do you think our business success is going to reflect that? 
it's going to. So make sure you're taking the time to give yourself some breaks, especially between tasks like that. If you're doing all your admin stuff in the morning, take a good long lunch break, eat something good, stretch, walk, do some laundry, do something a little bit more active. I'm not saying you've got to run a marathon or work up a huge sweat, but then just move your body around and then get yourself into place going this afternoon. I need to do research, which requires creative energy and I need to foster that. Give yourself an ample break. This is your permission. This is your permission. You do not have to work every minute of every day in order to be the most productive. In order to be the most productive, you need to work optimally for your personality type, for your space, for your, you know, and taking care of your body in your mind, in your rest is also really important for that. Okay. Another thing that you can do to get more done and to be more efficient and be more productive in your Amazon business is to manage your distractions. Yes, I know. This is huge. When you, when you get off task, and you will, <laughs> create a process or method and how you will handle that. So if you're anything like me, you're terrified that you're going to forget something. So you'll just take care of it right now. You know, that's why we have like 14 different tabs open and I keep tabs open because like, oh, I can't forget this. And then that same tab stays open all day and it feels very naggy to me. And it's like, okay, open this and deal with this and open this and deal with this, except for we don't need to open things and deal with them in the moment. To get more done is having a process for managing your distractions because they will come. <sighs> managing distractions. I mean, I could go on and this could be a whole episode. I think I made a whole episode about this at one point, but um, it takes an average person like 23 minutes to recover from a major distraction and get back on task according to Fast Company. So keeping a notepad, this is what I like to do. You guys, this is literally it. I'm showing you this right now. This is my notepad that this is my like distraction notepad that I'm showing you here that when I have a thought or I'm on a call or I'm on something and something comes up that I don't want to forget, that's where it goes. And at the end of the week on Friday afternoons, I handle what's in that notebook and I either dismiss it because it was actually nothing. I've already taken care of it. I take care of it. I give myself a couple hours on Friday afternoons to handle the miscellaneous stuff that has kind of come to my plate. If it's someone I need to reach out to, then I put that on the reach out list. If I if it's some uh, email address that I need to save or a contact or someone that I, I want to connect with or someone in my network, or maybe it's a website or a tool that I just heard about and I want to explore, I give myself time for that because these things come up all the time. And if we're constantly trying to handle things while we're doing our tasks, we're going to be all over the place. And all over the place is not where we want to be, right? We want to be successful and not, not robotic. I mean, I'm definitely not robotic. Some people really like to work in a robotic kind of state. I'm not that way. But sometimes we just need to have a process for that. So keep those things there keep, and put a date or time on your calendar in which you will handle the miscellaneous because life is all about the miscellaneous, right? So we want to make sure that we have space on our calendars in order to handle this miscellaneous stuff that just randomly comes up or this is the email that you want to handle. This is this that you want to handle. Um, and also turning off social media notifications. You know, like... I don't have social media notifications on my phone or on my computer or my desktop or any of those things because I will constantly be distracted by that. Airplane mode is a really great place to do. If you don't want to change all your notifications and see what you're noti notified about what, when, where, then when you're in work mode, turn your phone to airplane mode. What is ops What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? Is that you miss a phone call from someone and you have to call them back? You miss a text message for something. I mean, if something really is 911, someone will call you over and over again and it will come up on your phone or you will see it or they will figure out another way to reach you if there is that emergency for two hours. Um, if you have, I know I, my hesitation had always been, well, I have kids at school. And so if there's an emergency and they need to call me, my phone needs to be on. So, you know, airplane mode or do not disturb mode, but then you allow certain things in your phone to come through. Like uh, if you put your phone on do not disturb, but then you have a, a, a way to add certain people that will always come through, like your immediate family members or the school or your job or whatever it is, then you can, you can adjust that. All of that is adjustable. The truth is 
that we like the distractions because it's a welcomed distraction from the stuff that maybe we don't feel like doing in the moment. I mean, am I right? I That's kind of how I am. Like, oh, this fun cat video shows up on Facebook and now I'm watching that and now I'm in a black hole and now I'm answering questions and now I'm doing this and pretty soon two hours is gone and we go, where did it go? Have a plan for your distractions. It's okay to be distracted. It's natural to be distracted. We're all distracted. And the more ADD you are, the worse it is. And that's okay too. But you have to learn to self-manage because we are entrepreneurs. There's not a boss telling us what to do or not to do. And that means all the responsibility is ours. So that includes self-management. It's tough. I get it. But figure out what's going to work for you. There's tons of apps. There's tons of different things you can do. You can put your phone in another room. You can put it on airplane mode. You can turn off notifications. You can turn off notifications for a period of time or do not disturb. Um, fun fact. In the world of cell phones, just 10 years ago, smartphone usage was only 10% of ownership. It wasn't until 2012 when cell phones were, were way more commonly available. We can live without them for a few hours. We can. We absolutely can. We can reduce our distractions. We can block certain apps. We can block certain websites. You can use things like Freedom or Focus Me, um, Off Time. And, you know, these there's some different apps out there that can actually help you control you um, for these specific hours of time. So that's up to you. No mama, no dad, no someone's going to come in here and get your phone and be like, I'm putting on parental controls. Yeah, we do that for our kids because we want them to be safe. We want them to have healthy screen time, right? But how are we regulating ourselves? <laughs> Sometimes I laugh and I wonder why people still listen because I can be so tough sometimes to people, but maybe it's just because I have a soft, sweet voice and people listen to me and it doesn't sound as tough. But let's get tough with ourselves, you guys, right? Because guess what's on the line here? Like, just like for our kids, we put parental controls and screen time and we force them to eat their vegetables and to get up and move around and exercise and not just veg out on video games 24-7 is because we care about them. We care about their well-being. We care about them being successful, kind human beings that require interaction and not just screen time and you know, all these things, right? You're just as important. Your dreams your goals, your finances, whatever it is that you're in this for, that's what's on the line here. So how vigilant are you going to be with yourself in this area? Because we can regulate our kids. We can put parental controls on there and we can, you know, block certain things from, from their phones. But what are we doing to protect ourselves from ourselves? Right? So just think about that for a minute. Maybe it's just one thing that you can do to say, hey, for two hours a day, I'm not touching my phone. I'm not touching social media. I'm not touching my in inbox. I am just going to work on my business for two solid hours with no distractions. <gasps> OMG, what could happen? I would like to hear about that. So one of the last and final things is procrastination, right? I mean, who isn't procrastinating? Procrastination is part of everybody's life. It is. It's a symbol of a bigger, it's a symptom really of a bigger problem. Most likely a combination of fear, ignorance, overwhelm, being uncomfortable, fear. I'm scared. I'm scared to fail. I'm scared to try. Uh, ignorance. I don't know how. Uh, overwhelm. I don't know what to do or in what order or uncomfortable. This will be hard. It's going to hurt. It's going to make me feel unpleasant things. So we could just stop right there. And I've done a whole episode on procrastination and maybe I'll do another one and just bring it to the table again because we're all pros at procrastination, right? Those of us who procrastinate um, usually do it. And most of the time it's one of these reasons, fear, ignorance, overwhelm, or, unco or being uncomfortable, fearing the uncomfortable. Um, when things present to me that are feel like they're difficult or I don't know how to do them and so I know I'm going to become frustrated while learning a process, I tend to put those things off the most. But those are the times that those are the things that affect me the most as well because I'm avoiding them and to the nth degree. Um, most of this has to do with technology, files, sending, receiving, uh, settings on computers and audio and video and 
these are not my strong suits. And so I tend to run far away from them. However, they create the biggest problems for me. And running from them doesn't solve those problems. They just get bigger and bigger. And then eventually they're a mountain when they could have been a little anthill that I could have taken care of. So I know that a lot of you guys are just like that for one reason or another, but we need to really determine why. Why are we putting something off and solve the issue or at least the awareness and acknowledgement of it? To blast through procrastination, one of the best ways I have found, and I live by this today, is the 15-minute hustle. The 15-minute hustle busts me through procrastination because of the time limit. It gives me hope that I don't have to do this forever. That even if I'm uncomfortable learning something new that I'm not good at, or I'm scared I'm going to fail, or I'm scared to even try because it's heavy or hard, or I don't know what I'm doing, and it creates all those it creates all those negative feelings that none of us like. We don't like to be afraid. We don't like to feel ignorant, like we have no idea what we're doing. We don't like to feel overwhelmed and, you know, unaccomplished and just like all these different things. We, we don't want to feel uncomfortable or painful. And so when we know something might create uncomfortability or pain or fear or any of these things, we tend to run away from it. Um, but when it comes to tasks in our business or things that we're just putting off that we know we need to do, the 15 minute hustle is perfect. First of all, it starts with that task list, right? That task list that we already talked about making, you have your general task list of all the stuff that needs to be done on a regular basis and what comes first, second, and third. And you can find all this at mommyincome.com. You go to the 15 minute, uh, go to the courses or products and you get your 15 minute hustle chart and you get your 15 minute hustle digital workbook there. And this will help you. It's a whole, the whole digital book tells you how to create your 15 minute hustle task list, all the different tasks. You create your list and then you get a chart. Okay. This comes with the package and this chart gives four spaces for four tasks per day. This is your goal for the week. You have four tasks you can do. Yes, you can run your business. You can run your business on four tasks a day. Now, Hopefully you can do a little bit more than that, but if you only have room for four 15 minute hustles and you commit to that, you will see your productivity skyrocket because you're being intentional, because you're planning, because you put it on a thing, because you wrote it down. I will tell you this, this is how I live and die by the 15 minute hustle chart because I'm constantly prone to procrastination. And I usually put things off that are hard or difficult, or I don't know, or I don't understand. But the 15 minute hustle helps me to tackle those things. So I tend to let things pile up. Uh, Things, not just physical things, but digital things, papers, things, blah, blah, blah. And then that becomes overwhelming. And then I don't want to deal with it. So on my 15 minute hustle chart for today, actually, it says clean papers off desk. Now, that is definitely probably more than a 15-minute hustle time frame. But what it does is it gets me started because I keep putting it off because I don't want to do it because it's going to take long and I'm going to have to make all these decisions on these papers and ah, right? Setting the 15-minute timer gives you an out. It's like, okay, I am going to clean off the desk papers for 15 minutes only. And if I'm in the zone and I feel like I'm getting it done and I'm having a positive experience with it, I can go beyond the 15 minutes. But if I'm just trying to get it done to get it done and I'm going through it and I have 15 minutes and the clock is winding down, when that timer goes off, I get to be done. And I can come back and visit it again tomorrow or next week or whatever it is. But it's getting started that's most of the problem. Most of the problem is starting the task, the fearful, unknown, scary, hard. I don't know how, not sure what I'm doing. I feel like an idiot. I'm overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. That's what it eliminates. Set a timer and get started. It's to say, give your, it's permission to only have to do it for 15 minutes. And then you're done. And you can either be done and come back to it tomorrow, or you can actually finish the task in 15 minutes, or you can keep going because you realize that starting was half of the problem. So that's how you can do the 15 minute hustle. And the workbook tells you all about how to set up your 15 minute hustle. It's really short. It's not a really long drawn out process, but it can be absolutely life changing when it comes to procrastination. So what 
you limit your to-dos to four major tasks or, or four very important tasks per day, anyone can do four things in one day. Schedule time and learn the things that you don't know how to do. Schedule it. Just say, okay, on Friday, one of my 15-minute hustles is going to be moving all of my pictures from my phone to an external hard drive so that I can free up space on my phone. I've already got some in Dropbox, but I'm also really scared that I'm going to lose those things. So because of that, uh, I schedule time in order to move my pictures from my phone to an external hard drive so that I know that they're safe. They're also saved on the cloud. I, I just get terrified of losing pictures. You know why? Because that happened to me before. There's two years of pictures on a smartphone that were completely lost. Um, and it was just sad to me that all those pictures were all gone of two years. You know, you move from regular camera to taking pictures on your phone. This was like years ago with my very first smartphone. And I was just devastated that I wasn't able to transfer. It was like before all the cloud stuff was really a big deal. So I still have like PTSD about that. And so I don't want it to happen. And so it's something I put off because I think anytime I delete something, it's gone forever. And I'm not going to be able to find it or recover it. And something's going to happen to it because that's that's a real thing I face. And so when we get to those things, those feelings are valid and real, but we also have really good ways to solve those problems so that that doesn't happen in the future. And I put those things off because I have the memory of the scary, bad, fearful thing happening. I don't want it to repeat. So I just avoid it altogether. But it doesn't make it go away. It just makes it bigger. So organize your task lists so that you aren't so overwhelmed. Put some things on your task list and getting started is most of the problem. This is the 15 minute hustle. It's doing something, doing anything on that list for 15 minutes, things that need to be done regularly or even bigger projects like cleaning out a basement or a closet or, you know, like if you if you're ever an eBay seller, you everyone has what they call their death pile somewhere to where you're like, oh, I'm going to sell this on eBay. I'm going to sell this on eBay. I'm going to sell this on eBay. And pretty soon you have like a huge pile of going to sell this on eBay stuff that you haven't got around to yet. 15 minute hustle. How many things can you list in 15 minutes? You'd be surprised. Can you do one? Can you do one a day for 30 days? And you'd have 30 listings. 15 minute hustle. Y'all, we spend more than 15 minutes scrolling on our phones in the bathroom. Let's just be real about that. You have 15 minutes. You have more than 15 minutes. So how are you going to use it? 50, we can always find 15 minutes too. If you really feel, you're really time crunch. If you got like seven kids and you're all, you're homeschooling and running two businesses and like, I know people like this, that I'm not making this stuff up. They barely have 15 minutes, but they do, right? Waiting rooms, waiting for water to boil while kids are taking naps during halftime. <laughs> you know, there's always, you can sneak out a 15 minute hustle. So you want to go to mommyincome.com, go to courses or classes or products, wherever, you know, I'm not great at all the links sometimes, and it go to the 15-minute hustle chart. You will get a physical one of these and the digital workbook, some sticky notes, some pens, and this is going to help you with your 15-minute hustle strategy to get through the rest of this year. I know that you can do it. Um, I, it, it would just be something simple to start out. It's a very simple concept, but it really, really works, especially when um, you're struggling with overwhelm and you're not sure what to do and you have all these tasks or maybe you don't even know what the tasks are. The workbook will really help you define all of the things that you need to define in order to figure out how you're doing that. So. Get your 15-minute hustle workbook. It's digital. Then get your you get your chart. I personally mail this stuff to you so that you can have your sticky notes and your pens. And you're going to be ready to rock and roll. 15 minutes is going to change your life. It really is. It has changed mine. It's helped me be more productive, less procrastinating. I still struggle, but it's it's one of those tips that even my own family is like, I tell my husband, oh, I don't want to get started on that. It's such a chore. It's such a task to be able to, you know, clean out the basement or the storage closet or put the Christmas decorations away. There's so much of them. I love putting them up and then taking them down is like such a sad thing. And it's such a process um, because I have a lot of Christmas decor. So it's just it's everywhere. And then taking it down and putting it away and putting it all in the proper straight. It's such a chore. And my husband will just be like, hey, 15 minutes at a time. And you know what? This year, 
That's exactly what I did. Most years when I put away my holiday decorations, I do it all in one day and it's just this big marathon day of putting everything away. But this year I was just too tired, to be honest. I was just really tired. So you know what? I did 15 minutes at a time. I 15 minutes, I took everything off the walls and I put them in a pile. And then the next time, 15 minutes later on that day, I put that pile away and then got the, you know, then the next time it was taking the ornaments off the tree and the tree was sitting there for several more days. And you know what? It all got done. And I didn't stress about it. And I didn't feel like it was this big, long, overwhelming Saturday where I had to spend the whole day putting Christmas away. Instead, I just did 15 minutes at a time. And I knew I had a plan for that. And I knew I was going to continue executing that. It was freedom. That's what it felt like. I want you guys to feel like that in your business. I want you to feel like that in your life. Is there a closet you need to clean out? Is there, do you need to like vacuum out your car and you just feel like it's such a task and such a chore? 15 minutes, man, you can do this. So I know you guys can do anything. You could be anywhere else doing any other thing. You're listening to the Amazon Files podcast and I appreciate you. I thank you for listening. I thank you for giving me a place that I can share these ideas and thoughts with you. I hope they help you. I hope they change your life. I hope they make you smile or laugh or at the very least roll your eyes and go, this chick is off her rocker. But no matter what, I would love to have a review on the podcast. I would love to have a review on the Mommy Income website. Go to Google and research, type in Mommy Income and then leave a review on Google. I would love to just have your feedback. So if you have anything you'd like to hear, anything you'd like to share, uh, I am open to all of your feedback. Thank you so much for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. We'll see you same time, same place next week.